Meeting the Messiah by Jeffrey Bates Nicholas. When we scale and pass the walls, which our heart and hearts have built, and we come face to face finally with the blessedness of one another, then we see that these struggling fellow pilgrims with whom we share this space are no longer robbers, pirates, and thieves, but deepest friends, most intimate souls. To see this creation with the eyes of God and the seeing with the eyes of peace, it means finding ways to bind up the broken, even when the world says it can't be done. To see all these walls of alienation and despair means living our lives in truth and in justice, neither denying the holy gifts of our hearts and souls, nor worrying them like miser's gold. It is the simplest call of all, in essence, to open ourselves to God and first to open ourselves to one another. Each day we live in hope that the deepest possibilities of our dreams and of our visions in this life we dwell as well as we Then it is that we will turn and greet one another, knowing that long us the simple lesson standing fully in the presence of another true Messiah, face to face with one like us, a being a holy child of God.
now into a time of prayer or meditation. We begin by breathing in peace and breathing out love. love. Precious spirit of life that lives and moves within every human form, in every living being, in every plant and animal. Be with us in this life, in this night. Help us to see the beauty in all the perfections of this world. Help us to trust in the infinite goodness of human nature. Help us to remember that hope will carry us through the darkest night. Help us to find joy even in the midst of sorrow. We ask only that your peace, the infinite peace and love of the world be with us all tonight and into the new year. Amen. Child is born. Luke 2 1 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first of all his appearing us that was the governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judah, to the city of David. Is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and the years of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to 
to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Thank you. 
shepherd's sword in Luke 2, 8, 20. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of the great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the living of in the manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told to them concerning them at this time. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. The very kept all these things, pondered them in their heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. You might notice there are a few things different this Christmas Eve. <laughs> have you noticed? Mm-hmm. We only have one candelabra, and instead of it being up here, it's down there. We we heard some jazz at the beginning of the service because that's my favorite kind of music. Um, we had to sing in the entryway instead of on the green because it was raining. Um, Enzo likes to make lots of noise. <laughs> Christmas Eve is never the same, is it? It always changes. But the stories, the sacred stories remain the same. And as we gather in the soft glow of the light, I want us to reflect on the timeless messages of hope and of peace that this season brings. Christmas is more than just tinsel and ornaments, carols and feasts. It transcends the boundaries of culture, creed, inviting us to embrace a universal essence of love and compassion in a world often marred by strife, division, and even war, the story of Christmas beckons us to seek the sacred in every soul, to look for divinity that abides in every living thing. In the familiar tales we read each Christmas Eve, we find ourselves again in a humble stable of Bethlehem, where the child is born amid the simplicity of straw and the soft glow of candlelight and stars. Christmas is at its core, it celebrates the extraordinary within something quite ordinary. A baby in a manger lay down in a bed of hay, representing the magical mystery that lies at the heart of every life, every human being, each of you. It's a sacred mystery that gives you life. Amidst the humdrum of our own lives, we may ever be searching for celestial harmonies or bright lights that call us to rejoice, or maybe an angel to hearken us to fear not. Fear not. In reality, the simple things, the candle, the baby that smiles at you, the surprise gift, the trafficless streets. That might be the true miracle of Christmas when it happens. This Christmas let the joy resound in our hearts, transcending the challenges and the uncertainties in our world. Each year I'm reminded that not one of the Christian Gospels tells the same story of the birth of Jesus. We only read from Matthew and Luke, 
but all four of them tell a different story. In the book of Luke, we hear of the shepherds, and in the account of Matthew, the Magi. The Magi are wise men who embark on a journey guided by a bright, shining star. The shepherd story reminds us that every offering is a precious gift, even the smallest, even what seems the most humble. The Magi teach us that the search for meaning is the universal human experience that transcends cultural, religious, and geographic boundaries. All month we've been lighting the Advent wreath, first for peace, then for joy. The joy that casts out all fear. The next candle was for faith and hope. And this morning's candle I lit it for love. The golden Christmas candle at the center represents the deeper meaning of Christmas. That gifts of peace and joy and faith and love are for all people, everywhere. Not just for some, but for every person. This Christmas, let the Magi inspire us to navigate the paths of our own lives with wisdom. In a world often filled with distractions and noise, let us waken in each moment, recognizing the sacredness surrounding us. The true gift we can offer is not gold or frankincense or murder. No, the truest gift we have to offer is our presence, just showing up. The simple act of being there for someone else and for the people we care for, for anyone in need. On this Christmas night, let us open our hearts to the possibility of meeting the Messiah in the eyes of the stranger, in the laughter of a child, and in our own reflections. Like the Magi, we are all on a journey seeking the sacred, and if we pay attention, we may discover the divine in every moment of our lives. May the spirit of Christmas infuse our lives with renewed hope, boundless joy, unending compassion. Let us go forth with open hearts, ready to meet the Messiah in the beauty of diversity and shared humanity that unites us all. May the universal message of Christmas warm our hearts now and throughout the year ahead guiding us to be beacons of light, fountains of love, practitioners of compassionate understanding. I wish you a merry, merry Christmas with the blessings of love and peace and joy that knows no bounds.